Hi, good morning. Robert Medlin here. You know, uh, today I want to just uh, give a different perspective about uh, a Christian relating to the re election and uh, to politics and and just in our general lives. Uh, I think that will really be beneficial to you. Um, in uh, in First Timothy uh, chapter two, Peter says, first of all, I want you guys to pray <laughs> for uh, for yourselves and and also." Uh, for kings and those in authority that means anybody that's in authority in your country or in the nations of the world first of all pray for pray for yourselves and then pray for the pray for the kings and the leaders in authority that there would be peace on the earth that there would be peace that you would be able to enjoy your life in a in a atmosphere of peace and uh, and it says that it, so that all men can so that so that the gospel can spread and people can get saved and so that's that's the purpose is of prayer is, is is to be sure to pray for the existing political leaders because they're making decisions and they're they're doing things with policies that are that are going to impact our lives and so first of all pray for them and uh, so that there would be peace in the so that we would live in a in a atmosphere of peace that's what Jesus wants us to do but uh, let's let me just uh, go back to uh, the book of of Daniel to give you a little bit of perspective of why we need to pray for our leaders uh, it doesn't matter who they are uh, they're all vulnerable to demonic influence they're all vulnerable uh, they need our prayers uh, in the book of Daniel is a perfect illustration of this and in, in Daniel chapter 10 uh, Daniel had a vision and and finally uh, he fasted for 21 days and finally an angel the the angel Gabriel appeared to him and and told him he said Hey Daniel, uh, when you began to pray, the first the first day you began to pray, God sent me with the answer to your prayer. Now this was amazing. You know, Daniel was Daniel was it was seeing uh, through the scriptures, through Jeremiah's prophecies, that they had been in captivity in Babylon for seventy years, and it was getting time for them to be released according to the promise of the Lord. God had miraculously pre preserved the Jews that had been taken captive to Babylon through a series of 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 leaders and at times those leaders would would uh, come under demonic influence and would try to kill Daniel and his friends and try to annihilate the Jewish people and so Daniel had been through this for 70 years and so the angel appears to him and said so Daniel is praying about their Jeremiah's prophecy that they're going to be released to go back to to Jerusalem and of course that was necessary because the Jews had to go back to Jerusalem because Jesus the Messiah Jesus was going to be born uh, in Bethlehem and so they had to go back uh, for that to happen and so uh, so the angel said what well, said 21 days ago when you first started praying he said God sent me with the answer to your prayer he said but I was detained with the with the king of Persia so what happened was is that as as Gabriel was bringing the message to Daniel the king of Persia the natural human king of Persia was under a demonic influence by the by what's called the Prince of Persia, uh, principalities and powers, the the demonic governing spirits uh, over that region is called a prince, and so the Prince of Persia was 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 influencing and had a strategy against the King of Persia to influence him, and so uh, Gabriel said, "I got diverted uh, on my way to you with the answer to your prayer, and I had to go and stand against." And stand against this prince, this demonic prince, in support of the king of Persia, to keep him from being influenced by this demonic prince. And so, uh, Gabriel spent 21 days there, uh, 21 human days there, resisting the efforts of the demonic prince of Persia to influence the king of Persia. Does that make sense? So, our leaders are are. are they're not just making their own decisions and making political party decisions. They're under the influence of angels and of, of powerful angels and powerful demonic spirits called princes that they need they need us to pray for them. And so uh, what happened was Gabriel said, told Daniel, and said 21 days after I withstood this, this, this prince for 21 days and finally Michael, the archangel that's primarily responsible for protecting the Jews, came to help me and to and to take my place so I could get through with the answer to your prayer. So that's an, that's a reason why some of our prayers are delayed is that there uh, there's there's 
things going on in the spiritual realm and the heavenly realms that we're not aware of and that cause to del delays. And so we're not supposed to give up. We're supposed to persevere until we see the answer to our prayers, uh, just like Daniel did. Daniel fasted for 21 days seeking an answer to his prayer. So so we understand then that there's 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 demonic influences trying to, trying to affect us right now we the, the the lord's not sitting around waiting to find out who you're going to vote for uh he's waiting for you to to pray he's waiting for christians for us to pray because of the things that are going on jesus said when i come will i find will i find faith on the earth he said the faith is prayer is an evidence of faith and so uh but to understand the biblical perspective that, that our job as Christians is to pray for the existing leaders as well as to pray for the election, but to pray for the existing leaders. Tremendous decisions are being made right now. We need to continue to pray for our existing leaders so there will be peace, so the gospel can spread, so that so that uh, the harvest can come in. So uh, in the book of Revelation, <clears throat> we see in, in Revelation chapter 12, uh, as Jesus was ascended to the throne of God, that, that Satan was lost his position satan and all of his angels were cast out satan has no place in heaven anymore satan's not in heaven accusing you the only place satan is accusing you and is 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 here on earth accusing you to your very ear because in god's mind you're innocent if you're a christian if you believe in jesus your sins are forgiven you're righteous and holy and blameless in his sight so satan can't accuse you to god god says you're innocent you know who's going to bring a charge against god's elect it's god that says you're innocent and, and so uh, who's going to condemn you? Jesus is at the right hand of God saying that you believe in his blood and you're free and you're innocent. He's pulling for you and interceding for you. So so in the book in, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, we see at the end of the book of Revelation, what's happening is that Satan is trying to 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 attack and destroy the Jews. We've seen that happen over and over through throughout history. Uh, and it happened uh, in World War Two when Hitler was, you know, uh, he had they looked like political ambitions and desires but his real motivation was a prince a demonic prince that was influencing him to try to destroy the jews well a tremendous numbers of jews were in russia at the time and so hitler for for no sane reason decided to attack russia and uh, many people attribute that as the reason why he lost the war was that he made that decision to attack russia and the reason he wanted to attack russia was he wanted to destroy the jews and Hitler's plan, this this prince that was influencing Hitler's plan was to destroy the Jews. And so we see that happening right now. God has angels uh, protecting the Jews right now because there's a harvest that's going to come in. The Jews are going to turn to Jesus at the very end before Jesus returns. And so there's a, there are angels protecting the Jews. Most of the Jews are agnostic or atheist. And uh, some of them are religious, but uh, a lot aren't. So uh, Jesus wants to save them. He's protecting them for Abraham's sake. God promised Abraham that he would that he would bless his kids, and so uh, that's why it's that's why it's happening. And and they were under tremendous oppression throughout their history because they were carrying the seed of the Messiah of Jesus uh, until he was born. So God has a special plan for the Jews. And so at the end of the book of Revelation, we see that that that. Uh, that Satan is trying to attack the Jews and and he's the woman who gave birth to Jesus in the book of Revelation the woman who gave birth to the to the male child was the woman was was the Jews who gave birth to Jesus and and he's attacking that woman in her seed and he's attacking the ones who believe in Jesus those who believe in Jesus Christians so Satan has Satan's plan is to attack the Jews and, and to attack Christians and so the reason we need to pray is under looking at the politics and all you can get confused. But if you keep in mind that what's really happening is Satan is, has a strategy like playing a chess game. And his strategy is to destroy the Jews and to destroy Christians. And so we have to pray for the politics because he has princes that are trying to influence the outcomes of uh, politics and of elections. And of things like that, uh, the, the decision makers of the countries, the nations of the world. So uh, we have to take our place and do our job and, and, to, and to pray. Pray for those that are in authority. Pray for kings and presidents and prime ministers and all those that are in authority so that, so that there would be peace, so that we would enjoy a nice, peaceful time 
and that the and that the gospel would be advanced easily and that uh, the gospel evangelism would take place easily without any hindrance uh, in the nations of the world so that's that's God's plan so in the book of of uh, Esther we find that uh, this this was after Daniel uh, Daniel had his vision shortly after the king released the Jews to there was an overthrow of, of the in the politics of that nation another nation came out came in and that king released the Jews to go back to Israel and so they went they went back and and then but some of the Jews didn't leave it's just like today you know a lot of the Jews went back to Israel but there are a lot of Jews scattered around the world that haven't gone back so uh, uh, in the book of, uh, of Esther where it, it looks at what happened uh, a number of years after the Jews left and went back to Israel is they were still hanging out over there uh, in Persia and and so uh, all of a sudden uh, this this guy has influence with the king and and the king gave him permission to destroy all the Jews in that whole province now isn't that something just all of a sudden he just gave them permission to destroy all the Jews on a certain day and so then the book of Esther is about Mordecai and about Esther and Esther was uh, Esther became the queen and Esther was a Jew and Mordecai influenced her to influence the king and so to overthrow that that edict that had been pronounced that was going to through through Haman this man that was going to destroy the Jews on a certain day that that uh, all the circumstances in the book of Esther uh, looked looked certain that it was going to happen but all of a sudden it was reversed and instead of the Jews being destroyed the Jews were exalted Haman and all the people that conspired against the Jews were destroyed so God has a purpose we have to be in line with his purpose his purpose is to is to protect the Jews and to, and to save them uh, that they would come to believe in Jesus and also that the people of the world would be saved and that all people would would believe in Jesus and accept him and so and that takes place as through the church as the church is advanced and apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists are sent out then the church is advanced and in, into every nation and makes progress in every nation and people come to believe in Jesus in every nation so so that's really what's happening is 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 uh, if you put aside all the politics and and just look at biblically what's happening you have to put first things first and if you put first things first do what the Bible says Pray for the leaders that are in place right now. When the new ones come in through the election, pray for them too. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna have the same problem as they're gonna be demonic princes in Satan's kingdom that are gonna be trying to influence them, trying to cause them to make decisions that are gonna bring destruction and harm to humanity. Jesus wants us to be a blessing to humanity, and He wants the gospel to flourish and prosper. So that's what the uh, that's that's what he wants us to do and so so it's okay to be politically involved you know Jesus and his 12 disciples he had a, he had a couple of guys that were called zealots they were politically involved but the real issue is the kingdom of God is the kingdom of Jesus and what Jesus is doing so so do whatever the Lord puts on your conscience about the election uh, but first of all pray and understand that your prayers are powerful because you're praying according to the will of God that you are interceding and angels are being dispatched and it says in uh, in Hebrews it says Hebrews chapter 1 are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation so your prayers are powerful when you pray angels are dispatched just like when Daniel was praying angels were involved angels were coming to him with answers to his prayer angels were were going to to protect the 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 ruler of of Babylon from being influenced by demonic princes and spirits so uh, we have a role to play as Christians we're not just political Christians Let, let's just let's put that on the we're in the proper position where it should be you know not don't don't put don't put your politics ahead of your spiritual life in Christ and your spiritual life in Christ is to pray for those leaders whoever's in place whoever's in place in any nation that they would be protected that they would make the decisions that would be a blessing that would cause the gospel to flourish to cause the people to, to be willing to accept Jesus to cause the people to be blessed uh, God's plan is he sends he sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous Jesus wants everybody to be blessed so so I, I know this will help you uh, give your 
a better perspective of especially uh, at this particular time uh, as we're preparing for the election in in 2016 a, a proper perspective of of a christian's role in this is not just uh, minor it's major our role is major and so we need to fulfill that and uh, we'll be rewarded in heaven for our faithfulness in prayer to to pray and, and do exactly what god says for us to do in the scriptures well god bless you and have an awesome day